Hey, what's up, everybody? Good morning from Las Vegas. I'm, uh, I'm just cleaning up the house and just chilling a little bit before the family wakes up. So, I haven't bought any new records. I did find a, um, a Kef speaker, uh, which was a, a KEF speaker, which is really crazy because <clears throat> it was only 25 bucks. And, uh, Someone had just bought one speaker <laughs> before me, idiot. So I could have had the pair for 50 bucks. Uh, even though I don't need them, uh, I still bought one just to, just to add it upstairs. See, I don't even know if I'll keep it or what. I also found an Adcom power amp, which I didn't, didn't buy. <clears throat> Mostly because it only had, well, I just don't need it. I, I, I don't need an amp. Um, but it was cool. I listened to this last night, the Three Dog Night Harmony. <clears throat> My dad, I remember, my parents said they went to see Three Dog Night, who were hugely popular in the 70s. They were an Australian band. The name came from uh, shepherds who would sleep with dogs at night to keep them warm. And uh, when it was a really cold night, they would say it was a three dog night. <laughs> you needed three dogs to keep you warm. <laughs> um, but recently we went camping in Joshua Tree National Park and it was so freezing butt cold. I was like, yeah, I could see why. We had to like huddle up for warmth. We were so cold, so I, I get it, you know. Even with good sleeping bags and stuff, it was just so cold. This is, I thought, I was like, I couldn't remember what it sounded like. <clears throat> and I was like, this is gonna have a, like a, horn, a lot of horn rock and all this stuff, but it doesn't. It's not a lot of horns. This is actually good early 70s rock. Uh, but all of these records are in the letter T. They're all from the letter T because like they came out of a cube that's all T's upstairs. I grabbed a bunch of records to listen to downstairs. And every night when I come home, I listen to a few records, you know. Tiger. You know what else happened that I should tell you about is last weekend I saw Stevie Nicks. I got free tickets to see Stevie Nicks. I have tickets tonight to see the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which is pretty cool. Um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers tickets are only 25 bucks. I mean, of course you're gonna have to pay stupid uh, Ticketmaster fees. Sorry, let me click that little clip for this tripod. Uh, and, you know, Ticketmaster fees are gonna be ridiculous, but uh, 25 bucks is, is admirable. They're trying to keep the prices down. Nobody else seems to care anymore. <clears throat> These tickets are nuts. Um, but I usually only go to shows if I get free tickets. But Stevie Nicks was cool. She's about to turn 75 years old. So, I mean, I definitely, that falls in my wheelhouse of try to see these people in their 70s. Like last year, I saw John Fogarty and Van Morrison and the James Taylor and um, the Rolling Stones and, you know, a bu bunch of like legacy kind of, you know, but baby boomer type acts. And I'm glad I did because I'm running out of time, man. I'm running out of time. Yeah. Tiger. <clears throat> uh, there's two Tiger. I actually listened to two Tiger records this week if I can find the other one here's the other one I listened to Tiger kind of looks like it's going to be late 70s AOR but it's actually kind of mid 70s um and really good actually early to mid 70s I would say uh kind of like um Spooky Tooth you know uh Procol meets Procol Harum kind of uh ish there and it, it gets a little proggy too I mean it gets it gets kind of proggy um Super Tramp, you know, if you're if you're a fan of those kind of bands, you know, the, the, I actually like this a lot. I think it's quite good. Um, this is nice 70s rock. If you like 70s rock, which I do, obviously, the, a lot of this stuff is 70s rock. I listened to this, Titus uh, Julie Tippetts. <clears throat> These are all T records. Julie Tippetts, formerly known as Drew, Judy Dris Julie Driscoll, <clears throat> who uh, played with Brian Auger in Trinity. She was uh, married to the jazz musician Brian Tippett. This is called Sunset Glow from 1980, no, 1975, Sunset Glow. Jazz, <coughs> you know, uh, uh, jazz rock, fusion jazz. It's good, though. Really good, beautiful record, gorgeous record. Julie Tippett, Sunset Glow. Loved that. That was amazing. I listened to this this week. Uh, an old favorite, Sonny Condell. The record's called Camouflage. It's got this import sticker. Um, this is, uh, you know, he's Irish. 
Uh, God, this is great. Beautiful, man. I mean, if you like Nick Drake, if you like, um, if you like that kind of thing, this is just, if you're a Nick Drake fan in general, this is just a gorgeous record. If you like um, Richard Thompson, beautiful, gorgeous record. And and I'm a big fan of the, the, the kind of acoustic 70s, you know, folky kind of artists like, um, uh, uh, John Martin, and I, I talk about these guys all the time, John Martin, Nick Drake, um, John Chapman, uh, uh, there, there's so many, you know, of them, you know, I was talking about Richard Thompson, um, you know, great, great artists, uh, Roy Harper, you know, if you're a fan of Roy Harper, absolutely, this, this, this is terrific, it's so good. Um, so, Titus Grown, I listened to. Titus Grown. Really cool, psychedelic, proggy kind of record. Gorgeous record. This is kind of rare. Um, on Janus. This is a super cool record. I'm actually really happy to have this. Um, somebody wrote in the back, not great, but worth a listen. Uh, the last cut uh, isn't bad. <laughs> I just feel like the kind of criteria they had in the 70s is like, I don't know, man. You know, there's always a lot of music, I guess. Um, third of a Lifetime, Three Man Army. They're, I've seen this before in the gray cover, too. The yellow one, I think, is kind of uh, older, I think. But this is, or uh, the yellow one is British, I think, cause, because they were British. This is a English pressing of this. But they were an English rock band, you know. It's, I mean, ballsy, hard and heavy 70s rock, you know. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, this is not, this is, you know, like, more like Thin Lizzy or something like that, you know. Um, great, which I did, I did listen to Thin Lizzy because it's a tea record. I've got some in here. Steve Tilson collection. I think he was, like, related to Fairport Convention. I think he owned a club with Burt Janch. Who is another artist I would put in that Sonny Condell kind of wheelhouse, Burt Janch. Um, but yeah, uh, he owned a folk club. I mean, this is like definitely folk rock, you know, um, in that same, you know, more like acoustic folk, really, more like a uh, uh, Clive's original band, Clive Palmer, you know, that kind of thing. Um, not not super memorable. I mean, it, you know, I'm into it, but uh, if you're gonna if you're in the mood for that kind of music, there's a lot of stiff competition. This is a good psych record, really good psych record. Uh, time, smooth ball. I have so many psych records, you know. I kind of forget. I put it, I put it on, and I was like, oh, this is great. You know, this one I really love. I would say this one and like graffiti, I think, are both. Uh, pretty solid psych records for not being super expensive. Here's a psych record, which is not super strong. Toad Hall. You know, they kind of, it's just called, like, it says Class of 68 in the back. This is a promo copy. They're kind of amateurish. I mean, they're kind of like high school band that played a lot of dances and stuff. Not bad, but just not, not super developed. They're a little bit sophomoric. I, it's not near, especially when I listen to that Smooth Ball, which is a much better record. <clears throat> Mel Tillis. Straight ahead country, old country record. Big and country, Mel Tillis. So square. Very middle-aged and square and hokey and wonderful. Great. Timber. Bring America home. Nice obscure uh, 70s rock record. Very obscure record, I would say, um, from 1971, early 70s. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. That I just think, you know, just there's just so much of this kind of thing, you know. America's a vast country. There were many, many bands like this and stuff. You know, it's kind of throwback to the 1800s, early 1900s, which was kind of popular in vogue at the time. Okay, here's a really good power pop record, Dwight Twilly. Very good uh, power pop record called Sincerely. If you're a fan of Big Star, I would say this is a great record. Um... I would highly recommend this. Uh, excellent record, sincerely. Dwight Twilley from Oklahoma. <clears throat> I can't remember if he's from Tulsa or where he's from in Oklahoma. 
This is on Shelter, which was connected to the state of Oklahoma because Shelter was Leon Russell's label, you know, a lot of artists in that area. J.J. Kale was on that label, Shelter. Um, yeah, anyway, Dwight Twilley. This is great. This is really good. Uh, you know, it kind of owes a lot to, to uh, British pop rock of the time. Uh, and that, to me, is a signature of, of uh, power pop in general. But yeah, if you're a fan of Big Star, definitely check this out. Dwight Twilley Band, that's great. <clears throat> Throbbing Gristle. 20 great jazz funk. Uh, 20 jazz funk greats. What a weird and amazing record. Every time I listen to this, I kind of get something different out of it. It's actually pretty subtle. I mean, to, to say that it's industrial, you know, what to me, when I think of industrial, it's proto-industrial. Let me put it that way. Because when I think of industrial rock, I'm thinking of, like, ministry uh, from the 90s. Because I'm a 90s kid, you know. And um, this is, like, much closer to, like, Brian Eno. Um, something like that. This is really interesting, you know, kind of... Uh, Brian Eno, Soft Machine, you know, avant-garde, uh, Peter Gabriel, maybe, 70s English avant-garde, but, you know, it's great, really good. UFO 2, One Hour Space Rock, Flying is the name of the record. Um, yeah, Space Rock, I mean, they're British, but, I mean, I think it's kind of, uh, you know, kind of owes something to German rock. Uh, you know, this is great, though. This is an amazing record. It's not a T, but it's in that wheelhouse. I got a lot of filing still to do in this upstairs cube. Timberline. This would be another kind of early 70s sort of throwback. Return to the country hippie kind of record. Timberline. Uh, actually, that's wrong. This is 1977, so this is not... It, it, you know, it, it's kind of late for, for what it's trying to do. Uh, I would say it's a little bit, uh, it should have been from like 1970, 1971, <laughs> if, if that makes sense. But that's okay. I, you know, I'm still into it. More Mel Tillis. I didn't listen, I didn't get around to this one, although I've heard all these records many times. Southern Rain, another Mel Tillis record. These are nothing. They cost a dollar. These are dollar records, you know. But I love my love old country. Bobby Timmons. This would be in my wheel. This is a Rudy Van Gelder produced record on Prestige. In the wheelhouse of organ jazz, which I think is terrific and is hugely underrated uh, in general. Organ playing jazz. Kind of like, like um, Jack McDuff or, um, so, you know, uh, so many. Uh, there are so many. I've done videos on this. Uh, th this is great. I, I would almost like to make another one. Um, I should make another. Uh, I called it organized before. You know, organ jazz record. Here's another band by that band, Time. No, nice psych record. This they were a good psych group. <clears throat> Tiger B. Smith. Uh, kind of a fun, uh, messy '70s rock record. Tiger B. Smith, 1975. It's a mess, total mess of a record, but uh, it's fun. Thunderfoot, another obscurity. Uh, this was on Paula Records too, which was out of Shreveport, Louisiana, which is kind of a nowhere label. And the uh, cover art is very, you know, looks like it was sketched by a high school, high school art kid, you know. Uh, but yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is early 70s. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is early 70s. Look at this band. These guys are great. That's amazing. Here, here's a really good 70s hard and heavy record. Thunder and Roses. King of the Black Sunrise. 1906. Maybe even 69 or 70. Something like that. I would say it's around that time frame. This is an awesome record. This is, this is more like proto heavy metal. Proto heavy rock. Great record. <clears throat> Johnny Thunders. The great punk uh, rock guitarist Johnny Thunders, big famous junkie. This is French. It's like a comp of Johnny Thunders, and he's he's awesome. This is a great great record. Uh, there's oh, there's this record. This is a great record. I listened to this, um, and I was thinking, man, this is like one of my favorite AOR records of all time. Billy Thorpe, 
who was, you know, actually kind of popular at that time, you know, the late 70s, early 80s. Um, man, this is a great record. <laughs> I, I, very underrated record. You could buy this for nothing, you know, but uh, this is just awesome. Uh, I really loved this, actually. I, I was, like, really enjoying that. Here's a great classic, one of my all-time favorites, I mean, Traffic. Just a, pretty much a, just a classic absolute classic you know pearly queen is on this and feeling all right one of their best songs and um, dave mason song feeling all right no time to live means to an end uh pearly queen you know steve winwood is just a, is a jammer man steve winwood is finds a groove you know that's what i love and he's a great songwriter good singer you know, plays guitar and piano quite well. He's good looking. I mean, he's just kind of all around, um, you know, and I, I just think they're great in general. I mean, he's just a musician's musician. I saw him open for uh, Steve, uh, for uh, Santana one time. I'm so glad I got to see him. He's just a legend, man. Um, kind of like Jeff Beck. I'm so glad I got to see him. And when I saw Jeff Beck, I also saw him with Santana. So super happy about that. Finally got a copy of this farm which is a um, extremely obscure psychedelic blues rock record from um, the late 60s, early 70s, which it probably originally had like 100 copies pressed, you know, almost nothing pressed. And I'm, this is on Garrison, that Spanish reissue label, Garrison. Um, you know, as I listen to it, I'm like, mm, this is very sophomoric and kind of amateurish and also underproduced it, you know you can kind of tell this was like an early effort they didn't have any real money they didn't have a real backing but you know the, they're doing interesting stuff psychedelic blues rock of the time in general is terrific it's great uh really awesome <laughs> you know it's awesome stuff uh thin lizzie's chinatown this is not a Thin Lacy record that I reach for a lot, so I was actually really enjoying this because this wouldn't be one of my first choices of Thin Lizzy, although it should be because this is really good. Uh, I love Thin Lizzy, of course. You know, I don't listen to enough Thin Lizzy. Need to listen to more Thin Lizzy. Tucky Buzzard. <clears throat> uh, what to say about this? You know, obviously it's 70s rock. I mean, obviously, you know, there's some blues in it. You know, Bill Wyman actually played... Uh, on this. Bill Wyman from the Rolling Stones played on this. Um, and, you know, he's the least, he's the worst musician in the Rolling Stones, and that's actually saying quite a lot. I, you know, none of them are, like, really... <laughs> Rolling Stones are super cool. I mean, whether or not they're the most advanced musicians, I mean, Ginger Baker had no respect for the advanced musicians. He shit on them all the time. But Tucky Buzzard, man, uh, you know, when I saw that Stevie Nicks show, man, that was great, dude. She did a cover of... Um, for what it's worth, the Buffalo Springfield song. She talked about Stephen Stills. She she talked about Tom Petty um, and did a little tribute to him, who was a, like a friend for like 40 years. Tom Petty gave her the song "Stop Dragging My Heart Around." Um, so you know what I meant to do is I meant to pull out the um, Stevie Nicks solo record "Belladonna" and listen to it, and I actually haven't done that yet. I'm gonna have to do that this weekend. As I say, I have tickets to the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers tonight. Which I'm pretty excited about. Um, this is the first time actually I've ever seen them, so that's, uh, I should have seen them a long time ago, so I'm pretty excited about that, and uh, anyway, I'm sorry for dragging this on for 19 minutes. Thank you guys, and uh, I'm glad to be making a video again. I meant to do it last weekend. Okay, deuces.